Okay, so before I continue rambling, um, I'll begin by introducing the poets. Um, and I've written a few little lines for everyone before I move into reading their bios. Um, so, what is the grammar or language of falling apart? Ian Dreiblatt writes. The grammar our, our bodies have, despite our work to, to obliterate, to obliterate grammar. Dreiblatt makes me think about what is the punctuation of a, bod of a body? What does the body say in ellipsis? Ian Dreiblatt has served as TV, has served as TV commercials correspondent for The Believer, taught at the Poetry Project, and sold fresh pudding on the streets of New York City. His poetry collections, Forget Thee, was published in 2021 by Ugly Duckling Press. Woo! And his most recent translation, Dimitri Furman's Imitation Democracy, is out now from Verso Books. Other writing and translation has appeared in Conjunctions, Bomb, The Baffler, N Plus One, Music and Amp, Literature, Jacobin, and elsewhere. He lives and makes soup in Brooklyn, New York, where the living is good and the soup flows like rain. Let's give it up for Ian. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all the intros. I'm sorry, because we have tight space. I do all of that. And then here are my words for Jennifer. There's a poetry that seeds the tile, and by tile, I could mean mosaic, stone, or piece in German that makes the tile speak or sound out. Jennifer Nelson's poetry speaks, and not only that, it bangs, gongs, holds a cacophony of notes. It is my pleasure to introduce Jennifer Nelson, who is a poet and early modernist art historian. This April, their biography of Lucas Cranach the Elder is coming out in the Renaissance Live series with Reaction Press. And later this year, their poetry manuscript, On the Way to the Paintings of Forest Robberies, winner of the Otterland Prize, will be published by Fence Books. They have also published three previous books and poetry of poetry and an art historical monograph, Disharmony of the Spheres, the Europe of, Holbe of Holbein's Ambassadors. They are an associate professor at art his of art history at the University of Delaware and currently the Hillies Bush Fellow at the Harvard Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study. Let's give it up to Jennifer. And finally, my words for John. A poem in duration, such as some of the poems of John Woodward, as a poetry sequence, as a poetry sequence demands and asks for your time. Other poems by Woodward are written in collaboration with the sun. Woodward's poetry is sorcery, science, and poem, poem, poem. John Woodward's books include Rain, Uncanny Valley, The Amber and Ambrose. In 2022, the Economy Press published his chapbook, Poolgoer, and Speller of I hope I'm saying that right. As well as a chapbook of his translation of Brazilian poet Nicolas Bear entitled, entitled Mirror City, a handful of web projects and video game adjacent prototypes can be found on his website. I highly recommend going there. Mm -hmm. And there's one poem that will ask you for 11 minutes of your time and others will ask for different minutes of your time. But I can very much recommend that. Um, so that's johnwoodward.net. Um, he lives in the Boston area with his wife, Sam, and works at the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. So let's give it up for John. Wow. Thank you so much. That was extremely beautiful. I was not, I was not expecting that in two ways, because what you wrote and said was so lovely and then also I sent that bio in when I had COVID like five months ago I definitely was not imagining standing in front of a room full of people who had just heard about my soup making but I do make good soups I can't figure this out is that right is it I talk wait if I talk like this is that wonderful does anybody anybody here know how a microphone stand works yeah, yeah. Got it. yeah. I think it's a choose I'm so happy. Uh, I'm so happy and honored to be here. I too have heard a lot about this bookshop and have never been here. Uh, I'm a huge admirer of Jennifer's writing, huge, huge admirer of John's writing for many years. Um, and also I think of John as a very dear friend and a very inspiring poetry person. And we have never done a reading together. 
So we, when we met, we were, it was so long ago that I was in my 20s. I barely remember. Uh, okay, I'm gonna read some poems. There are a few, uh, because I'm also, I, I do really love and engage a lot with John's work. There's a few like John Woodward buried, uh, what do they call them, Easter eggs in these poems. So for the real <laughs> Woodward heads, you'll catch them. And otherwise I'll announce them so you can pretend you're caught. Excuse me. This poem is called, I've also never read in Boston before. It's different here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this poem is called, Which Animal Would You Rather Be? Listen, say what you want about my scruples vis-a-vis -vis hostage taking, embattled sense of tone color melody, inability to navigate a suburban noodle menu, inexplicable indebtedness to the lyric soprano, but the record will show I can still wreck a barbecue. The teeth that were metal in your mouth become stones in my belly. There are, as we know, five kinds of metaphor. The small star that falls onto the roof, the giant wing that holds off invaders, distances brazed in seawater, Robocop, the turning of the seasons. What once I said deliberatively, melismatically, in the long enfolding skirt of cyclical time, I now say with the clipped astonishment of a newly drafted chaplain, oh, lift him up, that's all. Circuit gleams like bad advice. I'm so ashamed that I lived in a world of salt and suddenly after all these years just finally managed to hack the spectral authority of our thirst. As if to say awakened in or only knew the gifts of but a displacement, sapling liturgy, well, something to walk through with a colander on your head and a matrix of unreconstructed varmint talking you through non-Euclidean battlefields. This is how we crazed the wall, also why we boiled the sea. A few more? <laughs> I, think I could go. It's Boston, I don't know how they do that. Okay. Uh, this, poem is called, this poem is called The Truth About Complicity. Uh, and it has an epigraph from the rapper Despot, who I'm a big fan of. Green means go, red means go. Woke up this morning looking everywhere for the dialectic har, har, har. We splashed through the spilled vinegar of history, no big thing. Life is one of the grossest experiences you can have, but we press on with it. Organized revolt, armed insurrection, flight to the forest. Just reach into our grab bag of affects and pull out centrifugal grief. Poignant certainty, the glib cheer of, say, car washes or the Super Mario movie. All we're really saying here is we must attend to the dynamics. Rejection of ill treatment, an innate quest for freedom, crisis in the economic system and its political implications. Donkey Kong slowly shakes his head and throws an invisible barrel at lines of continuity yet to be established. Okay, oh, we're up to one of the John Woodward Easter eggs. Uh, so this poem includes a two-word phrase that is 100% stolen from a poem by John Woodward. If you know the poem, you won't have to stray. You won't be like, wait, are those the two words? If you know it, you'll know it. If you don't, yeah, I'm your Woodward people. <laughs> this poem is called Annette Peacock. Uh, I'm a big Annette Peacock fan. Barbara Giraffe, Martin Egret, Allison Hippopotamus, Nadezhda Goat, Lose My Body, Shake the Hell, Thurston Wildebeest, Omar Snake, Priscilla Lioness, Zainab Elephant, Herman Gorilla, Margaret Octopus, Start a Band, Flung in Joy, Steve Swallow, Creature Palette, Arthur Weird Bug, Patricia Mole, Cry Any Name, Shoshana Starfish, Endless Spider, My Pony, Your Pony. I see some of you were around in the 90s. Uh, this poem is this poem has a title that I saw on the internet, and I didn't have a title for this poem. And I was like, I think now I do. Uh, it's called "Stop Trying to Promote Food and Get a Job." <laughs> Things people say to each other. Start with what you know, which is to say, start with the scenery. Time dipped and nearly overwhelming curvature of out and abased pigment drop a prorated larynx in the foothills of what every town in the prefecture is called. Nothing is certain, but there were two approaching on horseback. Of course, I must reject these hot dogs, for I am French and just bursting to share the obscene infinite secret that only everybody knows. Neither the mountain nor the city, neither speeding ticket nor endless sad cistern, neither cockamamie acres reaching for miles in their immodest hunger, nor ruined temple that turns out after you climb 6,000 stairs to be a ruined temple. I flicked ash and said, ahoy, comrades. 
If you meet a pair with teeth, then reject it. Old machinery will assay the perfection of your schemes. Ancient snowdrifts will kiss the small of your back. Um, there's a quote from Jesus in there. I don't know if anybody caught it. Maybe you've heard of him, Jesus Christ, <laughs> inventor of churches. I've heard. I'm Jewish. Uh, this poem has two titles. It's called Gonad City or the People's Beef. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, there are some reasons but there's not that many reasons <laughs> just try it no sooner will you write the words the purpose of poetry is than an acquaintance in Italy sends you a photo of the local condom vending machine a slab of groovy aqua with fake computer cursive scrawled across the top feel make feel well, anyone could have told you that, but it's hard to hold a grudge against that swaying teen republic even after all the shit they've pulled forcing their way into half the world's mouths. We feel this even in English, where a lovable stupid word like twof has been greased out by second, or cheese gassed up all out of proportion. Some several causations, but I mean, there always are. That's the nature of history. Parties over before you get there, lagoons slowly rising to eat the shards of what was an absolute rager. Uh, this poem is called Dogs Dream of Meat and the Dreams Are Delicious, which is a line from an old Sesame Street cartoon, back when Sesame Street was a little more tripped out. Um, and I believe that that is a true statement. I don't know firsthand, but I believe it. Is it going okay? It seems like it's going okay. What's the worst that could happen? You guys, I mean, you're in chairs. Hmm. Disavowal is the sincerest form of flattery, a retrofit clambake poised on the knife's edge of the creatural. You find yourself careening amid the papal musks of a complete breakfast, steamily parsing whistle from dog, seething under insect decline, a last definitional human shittiness. A word like ekphrasis is so pointless, maybe. We feel the limitations of experience in everything we do. Oh, oblique tourniquet, ha ha ha. Materiality makes no sense, and yet inane bigots use it to rule us terribly. How great, though, to have a word for unwanted plants, to be the newest cadre on the dance floor, weep paste while a spry conciliary praises sleep like fresh bread blemishless. All across the fabric of whatever, consciousnesses swirl in and out, crystal surf as deep as playlist. Exemplary disease mistaken for celebrity disease, there may or may not be language, what there are for sure are languages. Amid the sullen rattle of ziggurats, you carry a transfigured bird to the exact center of the city, while sentinels ardent with copyright close in from perimeter. A tenuous anyone, sipwrecked on sibilith, the pigeons of our lax spoken endlessly down the funway. Um, and then I was going to read one more. This is the second Woodward Easter egg of a sort. But then I almost didn't, because I it's a little bit older. And I was like, is it arrogant to read something a little older? But then I thought, no, because it's Boston. Nobody in Boston knows who I am. Um, this is a poem that I wrote uh, that was dedicated to John like 10 years ago, I think it was published. And I never read it out loud to you. And I really respect you so much. So I thought, we're reading together in Boston. I'm going to, who cares? It's 10 years old. So if you don't like it, that's because it's, this is what I was doing 10 years ago. I'm way better at writing now. Uh, this poem is called Barishona, which is a, a Hebrew word um, that means like uh, in the beginning. And so, you know, it's very familiar to a lot of people in English that in the beginning is the opening phrase of the Bible. That is an English translation of a Latin phrase that is, of course, a translation of a Hebrew word. Uh, that word doesn't really mean in the beginning. It means at the start of. It's grammatically kind of weird. And this is a famous problem in like uh, Torah criticism for many years. Uh, the scholar Rashi wrote that uh, if he was trying to say this Latin phrase that gets translated as in the beginning, he would have used this word, barishona, which means more nearly in the beginning. Uh, and just a weird fun fact, you can hear in this word that second syllable, the rush, uh, is cognate with the ras of Rastafarian, which uh, they both mean head originally. They're the, the, the ras of a feudal Ethiopian uh, farm is the head of that piece of land, and the head of something is the beginning of it. Therefore, I will read this poem. Uh, barishona for John Woodward. Uh, it has an epigraph from Dante Alighieri. Uh, <laughs> omnis, omnis nostra loquela nectarabilis nectarabilis. Hmm. And in that sense, to talk and talk, and whether sunset approved the bridge, and were there rows of terraces seemingly as different as bridges, 
This soon that took forms, the animal becomes a plant. Good morning, xylophone. Good morning, forklifts in the rain I had so surprisingly called confident an economy of force. A word that speaks breath into all the air before grammar, torques it into tiny convulsions, doesn't want the sun or the moon. And to be honest, in the season of rain, which is beautiful, I thought mostly of how much we say and from where in the space between drops while everything and the rain itself happens. Seems to happen. The word splits like a shellfish, blood I will mass and cause bones to be, and a prison of doubles, a mirrored pill you can only talk your way out of. The story repeats the lines of heaven and earth, broken homonyms, if you breathe and are spoken, of course you're a word. Such is the story. Before the idea of the soul, soul must have meant body, no syntax worth a stopwatch for your earlobe. In the city gone imaginary, waters commingle under orange floodlights. Talking talks us into the flood and into the light, talking, but everything we say is breath torqued from an outside space, the phantom limb of a crazy neighbor. I'm not trying to cheapen it, rain them. We syntax, it isn't it we come after, it's everything. How cold the mouth achieved echo, how we stopped to say there was no rain before we first spoke, the weather like any of us is a creole. But real arcana wash through us in everything we are a rush in air to be saying of. Thorns and thistles, it will sprout. You write and write, it turns out a tree. Him yet, curse clay, anything. Events crane into peculiar corkscrew shapes so they can fit through these cracks. Syntax tears into you, especially if you are a wall or talking. Beginning Anne, words you count, what words you, from it you were taken, slants radical glass voice up the arcade. Difference between necessary and apparent truths, note to self, eat lightning. It's like I told you. I walked around Petersburg, I saw a poster for Spider-Man and learned the word for spider and always remembered that day, testudo sky and the thought that inside I'd missed the weather. And in your reign, you talk about Spider-Man and follow in authoring music. Or we hear a bell, breath assimilating breath to let the sound, to let the word part of the sound render out from the special resonance the metal has and how to talk to words about being from a bell and how to join this landscape when any move is music in the feet of danger, overwhelming. Still, somehow, we talk and see movies. Language returns as far as it goes. You can't fool me. There ain't no sanity clause. There is uplift. Blood is never plural. Rosin in this house and filter tips on the floors. Feathers, old brushes, us, of course. A lost verb connected with breath. Falling snow of its blossoms, the sound forgot. This real sense in which we follow a word, a wonderful word that tears a hole in us, we walk through into this wonderful hearing. The gods smelled the savor, the gods smelled the goodly savor, the gods gathered like flies over the sacrificer, the gods, as anyone can tell you, talked a lot and talked. The word for language is lip, the rain is falling regardless, no matter what you say, ha ha ha. The smaller birds with song solaced the wood and without knowing how and close enough to smell rain, it's as though they made all the absent houses swoon in a fevered acceptance, a demand, not a falsehood. We speak scatters now, song outside the singer. It makes sense. This device must accept all interference. Uh, thank you very much. Free Palestine. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Right. Are they going to make it? Wow. Yeah, I, I've never seen this place so full. This is amazing. Um, thank, thank you all for coming. Um, but thanks to Ian and John for reading with me. I mean, this is amazing. Ian, I swear to God, I've never met you in person, but I do feel like I know you because of your writings and your online uh, interventions. Oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, I I want to eat some soup next. Um, and then, John, you were like in one of my first poetry workshops ever, more than twenty years ago, and so it's been it's been really nice. And Esther, thank you for the beautiful introductions you made for us. Um, it can't be announced officially yet, but remember the name Esther Condo Heller because even might maybe tomorrow. 
something might be dropping. I, I can't say anything more, but you're seeing some emerge, you know, the emerging word, it's like happening. So, you know, just get excited for Esther. Um, all right, I'm gonna read poems from the book that's coming out. Sorry for the clickings. Uh, later this year on the way to the paintings of forest robberies. And um, the second poem I'm going to read, this is really unfair because I don't think any, almost any of you can really escape, but just there's trigger warning. Um, it will discuss suicide. Um, so I don't know what to tell you. Brace, brace. All right. At last, the archive. Our world is still the world that requires displacement and the isolation of variables, though, at last the archive creeps back up the strings, a sparkly residue. The sparks stand in for potential activation, but soft. A machine left on a gentle setting so it would last forever. I'll save you the trouble on the other side of the quest for the flaming sores. It's a library, not a garden now. It grew fat over the years from the calories in the killer's children's tears. And yeah, so this, this is a poem um, I'm going to dedicate to Next Benedict. Um, Don't kill yourself. Every observation transforms and fixes. Time is made out of observations. I will kill myself. The dying cat is clawing a carpet and I swore I would always see beauty in the garbage. I will kill myself rather than touch the world and feel my constant harm on it, my pride. Like a baseball bat, I'll kill myself. How could I judge who harms me? They are part of the world. And every time I lecture your heart open to these early mysterious drawings of stags and the soft shading of their veins, their interior forests, unpixelating as I preach their world, their reach toward the ancient secret of another life in charcoal on cloth scraps, I know it won't counter balance myself as interruption, the broken highway and a bad dream. I will kill myself. I think as I erode, bad road, too much pressure to serve a smooth escape. I've Googled bitumen, and every time I open my mouth, it pours glittering tar, the path to the lie about beauty, with a real historical Pisanello confirming his hand, and then that hand sepulchred, tapping like a one-toned xylophone, osteophone, that is my music a parade of single tones without echo. Toothless wagon ruts roll into the sea, slow with the moon's percussion. The relief. Relief is knowing agency isn't just effect and fault, a clatter under small crystal winter stream, freedom to wander, air, finally repetition, means control of desire. Together, ground leaves in the yard, wink in tandem from old rain, and the air leaves hover over what they've done, cells preparing to digest their own chlorophyll. It was summer around the cave when the fire made the story, when the shadow asked to be permanent, Birds never ask this, they cannot say it, but their existence relies on never naming spring. Um, Charlie's here. This is my poem for, um, for our time at Radcliffe and maybe everybody who's been alive over the last several months, um, Free Palestine. Thank you for saying that even. All right. My Mark of the Beast slash Poem About the Octopus. The thing we know about nature is it's already free, wrung from it. All laws are baby heuristics, finger puppets dressed as cops for the abstract infractions, capital. What I can tell you 
about second nature is it's more intractable than the first, its logic's toxic friend. The helicopter attempts innocence, suburban, calm, lawnmower of the sky, blower of infoliate clouds, while we do not quite riot singing about Palestine, information poses as a cure to fear that feeds it hope, feeds on beauty, but addict needs more and more. I want to unsee how quickly suffering breeds it, beauty. How totally harm befunds the beauty that builds tolerance of harm that even pushes worship of its pathos. Jenny says we can go hiking. I think of the hills outside the suburbs west of Jerusalem, walking at dusk to the columbarium, passing beneath the rock onto its floor and thinking as it opened its perforated violet mouth that doves live there, not ashes. Do we have to be melancholy about revolution in 2024? The helicopter stays, blood thumps in the ears, but if you try to talk to it, you die. Imagine propaganda so powerful 2,000 years later, a child of people born 8,000 miles apart, an average of 12,000 miles away is forced to learn the empire's language. Not only that, I loved it until I learned to fetishize the language the Romans themselves fetishized. I called to Gaius in my dream at the Asian fusion restaurant and impressed him with my Greek poem about the octopus. It climbed up the generative pre-trained walls that were just barely holding against the rising sea. I will be extinct now, one of us screamed. The papers say amnesia is president of the Philippines. The copter turned into a pop-up show of art I miss the stupid octopus, but I can be its legal heir only outside the empire. I'm trusting it to find our home beyond the reasonable horizon. And beneath these clothes, I wear its mark. This is from the tenure dossier section of my book. Condition for retention. I don't want to know what sings in the museum. What is there in art, but more murder, more grief, a fleck of lapis in the eye of a laser, the most transgressive beauty might and like dawn this long death, but I haven't seen it in so long. The one swan alive for miles of winter hoards the only break where a river falls into ice. I have gone beyond art's time machine in the land of unforgiveness. Fuck your cold therapy. I will not celebrate pain like a flower. In this museum, I brought a knife to sabotage the famous triumph of death. I'm a bad art historian. <laughs> And yet, okay, so grateful I turned to the art. <laughs> when uncertainty became a rough sheaf of probabilities and those formulas crept inside us, I went every day to the water and watched it lose its underhair to a kind of lake combine, a water harvester or lap, lap light at its prairie banks, which nodded back a very sleepy rainbow, blazing stars, purple and brown, big blue stems, blue, green and brown, compass plants, green, yellow and brown, purple coneflower, orange and brown hearted, all set in a tall grass, three-dimensional matting waving at the clouds. Are you measurable? I asked. Have you been approximated? Does it matter? Is your matter in any meaningful way repeated in the numbers? And will you decline somehow measured? Does the wild seem weaker now? How can I fight for you? What innocence must I push into to find you again? Trembling at every scale, a wind that could include people, blowing at every scale, a reciprocal twitching 
A great cluster of ducks appeared in the bay. Hundreds sandhill cranes stalked the path. Above art installations, eagles spread and contracted their wingspans, changing as they whirled closer, lower, farther, past the tree line, hungry and enjoying hunger. Every time I'm in a high place, I stop for the hawks, eagles, falcons, vultures, etc. even sometimes buzzards, not to identify them in the moment who would want to, the lords of the only metaphor that helps sharing our infringements. I stop between trees or in the field and look up like I'm in a copy of a painting of Icarus where Icarus winds and onlookers know it, wind in my teeth, whistling through my rictus. This is it, the innocence of technology. I think the golden eagle who laughs back at our biomimetics. It knows the article where we marvel how smart its use of wind, how complex our mappings, awkward. I am so grateful I turn to the art installation and get banging. I take the sticks and strike the pipes, the one rhythm I know. I'm feeding it math. I've sacrificed family. I've sacrificed community. I'm so sacred. The only thing left is the altar, which is this, wherever you see me, assume I'm guarding the altar that guards itself. Thank you, water. Thank you, buildings. Thank you, aquatic weed harvester, slimy green sliding up your mouth, the way the window has the moon slide up its side at night. Uh, anyone seen the Werner Herzog film, Cave of Forgotten Dreams? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> we have a fan. Um, so this is like a shout out to that. Well, no, it's a shout against. And then, but also um, probably less familiar, Agricola's status on mining from the 16th century. Fans? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, here we go. This is the title. It has a good title. You know, it's appealing. De Re Metallica. Today I woke up haunted by the man playing the U.S. national anthem on the ancient bone flute in that, that Herzog film. This is what I get for not having a past, like a landscape painting in the early 16th century. Everyone who sees me wants to know where the humans are. And the answer is I'm a forest with a few signs of habitation and undirected danger like a smile. Why can't I be claimed by something coherent but not evil? I tell the ghost I don't believe a message can be universal. This exorcism fails. He sits on my bed, watching my rivers pretend to be fountains. We debug an app that beautifies the mines inside my mountains. Thank you, everybody. Oh, I, this feels so good. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hate uh, uh, doing, I hate everything about doing readings except when I'm finally standing up and reading. So um, this is the good part. Thank, thank you for being here for it. Um, and thank you so much for your beautiful introductions. And Ian, thank you for reading that poem, um, which was so lovely to hear. Um, and uh, I guess I wanna say thanks for, um, the poems that you just read, except that now I have to follow you, so I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> uh, those were so beautiful um, and amazing. Uh, I kind of want to look at them on the page. Um, so I need to figure out what I'm going to read and stick to my time. Um, and uh, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not really sure how to read from this book in a way that will make it seem like um, it, it will convey, like, I, I don't know how to select a part that will convey something of the whole of it, if that makes sense. Um, there's a lot of different parts that are sort of all meshed, uh, interwoven together. Um, I'm going to, I guess, do the best that I can. Um, and uh, 
I'll probably stick to the shorter ones and not get too far into the longer sequences, but um, uh, there's one at the beginning here called Bitter Abeyances. Maybe I'll do a thought experiment with two hungover digital ragdolls on an isometric grid with the fuzzy causality checkbox checked. I feel like I've already given away the ending. I was going to point them towards a lot of hilarious edges and set their feet spinning, and we could watch them go over together. There's a place where whatever I feel for them in a given moment originates, however unoriginal the feeling. That's what I need to think about. A lot of design questions are answered by thinking about some hypothetical end user experience. And this one isn't like that. I guess I wanted to read that right up front just because of as a as to act as a sort of disclaimer for um every everything else that is about to follow. I I'm sort of uh, uh neglectful of your end user experience, so I guess I'm apologizing in advance. <laughs> um the Amber in Ambrose is the title of the book and also we're going to thank you. Yeah. Also, uh, is the title I'll buy a copy? <laughs> I can buy two more. Uh, they make great hey, gifts. Uh, quiet down in front. I'll be <laughs> the uh, so um, there's also a poem sequence in here that's called that, and um, I uh was um commuting to work on the on the T on the red line and jotting these little tiny poems on my phone. Um, using this form that will become uh, pretty readily apparent as I read a few of them. Um, uh, thinking about, well, I mean, where I work is a sort of institution of, of memory. We preserve animal specimens and their data in perpetuity. Um, I think a lot about what lasts and why and how do we keep things lasting? How do we let things lapse into oblivion? Um, uh, the word amber and the word ambrose or ambrosia are not related to each other. There's sort of like, um, on the one hand, uh, amber is like a kind of undying, un undeath, sort of unnatural, be like being trapped in amber, that sort of that sort of sense, um, as opposed to ambrosia, which is, um, you know, bestows perpetual life. Uh, I got to really obsessed with this dynamic between those two false cognates that don't mean quite the same thing. Um, but both have to do with preservation. Um, that the mount's eye's aura is restored quickly, convincingly, and inexpensively with a contact lens. That Canada balsam outperforms synthet synthetic mountains, matching glasses refractive index, despite yellowing with aged amber. That the that it was what it was is what mattered is like an oversimplification. That that lifelike eyeball hologram you commute through faces you both ways without turning to. That to have an impact that is Ambrose's, the Ambrose's heartbeat must seem not to. That being actually absent from a landscape you'd be preferred to be absent from, Amber. That the artichoke field of ancestors' trash they welded onto the horizon saws the sunsets. That whatever is sweet and simple about your life come easily to mind and often. That one continuums like continual, ambrosial, candied, pickled, freeze-dried, memorialized, fossilized, and so on. So... That alphabet soup preserves the alphabet and the alphabet eatle, alphabet eater. <laughs> and who will time tell, Amber? That the fingers keep time with the toes against that pathless pulse, dividelessly between them. That do rivers keep time rivals other questions to put while they weigh your worthlessness? That the lump sum they sent over from the Phoenix office was Ambrose, a man. <clears throat> that that false cognate, Amber, resembles to this living animal punctuation's place held unquestioned, undefined duration. That one role contends with both likeness and likelessness. Sorry 
both likeness and likenesslessness. <laughs> Two one-sided and unrelated coins, Amber. That the impact that is Ambrose's out astonishes the heartbeat that is Ambrose's also out astonishes it. That each that furnishes a Lucifer's perch, pulpit, all this shall be thine, emphasis mine. You guys know that story when, where uh, Lucifer comes, well, he's not Lucifer in the, in the Bible yet, but um, where where the, the tempter comes and appears before uh, Jesus and says, bow before me and I'll give, all, all this shall be thine. That's the, um, that's the source of the story there. It's It strikes me now as weird that I used Lucifer, actually, that's the, that's a Miltonian. Um, anyhow, uh, that they toast, interposing each glass between a self and a sunset they've seen through. Um, there's more of it, but I'm going to skip forward to um, uh, this one. Uh, sign painter's oversight. I underlined the what for you. I underlined the where to make it that much easier to see them through the air. I blackened all the question marks. I hung them in plain sight. I know the author didn't want them written white on white. And now you read and wander off. No footprints left behind. What beast you were, I can't begin. What weight, what gait, what kind? Uh, I'll roll right into Extinction Mask Memory Exhibit. Some knowledge I gain by making, by folding the paper stork stepwise, I enfold some future. Other knowledge came which experienced no making and connects to no future and can't be brought to mind without sensing a rungless ladder underneath. As a child, I saw the giant moa in resplendent red watercolor and gripped more tightly than hope the hope of seeing its reference. One day, one moment in its future, and was told, none remained. A convulsive distress followed. I've somehow still stopped experiencing it. It just ended at some point, and for no reason. We don't retain experience. Not mine, anyway. Not really. But I remember. But how I experience remembering what I remember, we don't retain that. And now I learn that it wasn't uncommon to take captive gorillas' death masks to forward from just living matter a not reverse engineerable fact. Unlike more lifelike artistic interventions, the cast often powerfully captures and conveys to humans a human sense of animal deadness or highlights an absence of a body. Yes, of a personhood. Yes, of an experience. The exhibit doesn't end as the species does, as each species does, in an undifferentiated unsaidness, an end of blood, a not knowing how, a veil before knowing. Maybe the worn mask is invisible. Maybe the mold comes off in pieces and isn't all the way off yet. Maybe abruptly as ever, the child character's character rig reaches its emote animation's loop point and doesn't loop or flicker or illuminate any interior surfaces, recesses, or darknesses. Um... Uh, how about eight second hand choreography? Dot your own arm with a stranger's blemishes with a borrowed Sharpie at an audition. With a, with a stranger's blemishes, forge down home recipes at an audition while aping postures and gestures. Forge down home recipes while walking down a simulated corridor with someone while aping postures and gestures until there's electricity there. While walking down a simulated corridor with someone, stick to the dialogue on the page until there's electricity there. Also, allow there to be chemistry. Stick to the dialogue on the page while secretly force feeding pre imagined magpies. Also, allow there to be chemistry and push both palms out in a show of legibility. While secretly force-feeding pre-imagined magpies, practice the cranial pitch and yaw of the median commentator and push both palms out in a show of legibility, alighting finally behind someone or in an ant farm. 
practice the cranial pitch and yaw of the median commentator while a reference series of mantis arms forms, alighting finally behind someone or in an ant, far in an ant farm, as if jigsawing up a platter of auto-populated keywords. While a reference series of mantis arms forms, dot your own arm, as if, jaw as, as if jigsawing up a platter of auto-populated keywords with a borrowed Sharpie. I start getting into a tongue twister mode with my own work and something like that, I apologize. Uh, it's gonna get worse. I wanted to read the other one that was like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I wonder if this feels like it's, um, emotionally, uh, a a active at all, or if this feels robotic to people, this is, this is like a really emotional poem to me, but it's, uh, but it won't sound like it. Um, this is called feelings of accompaniment. One of them characterizes these messages as a series of paragraphs within these messages. They email one another except for email. So they email one another. When separation is total, an unrelated lofty topic is addressed without synthesis. One of them makes love come true, omitting conversation and fear, woven into discussions of loneliness and the sleeping syndrome and the end. One of them characterizes messages as a series of paragraphs that never seem to protest. A separate topic is addressed without synthesis as a matter of loneliness and fear woven into protest. One of the waking syndromes and the sleeping syndrome suddenly switch places, a betrayal. The sleeping syndrome contributes, or worse, claims as its own, the betrayal of the waking and increasingly personal confessions of unrelated lofty topics over what feels like several months instantaneously. Each separate topic is addressed without synthesis as a series of betrayal narratives omitting conversation, and the waking syndrome overhears this but is powerless even to protest. Separate topics overhear this in turn, but this is in turn addressed without synthesis as one of them characterizes these messages as an alternating series of lonelinesses and fears woven into discussions of the waking syndrome and its subdividing. Towards Toward the end, the sleeping syndrome recreates threads of correspondence fanning out and subdividing. Toward the end, one of the lonelinesses and one of the fears are said to be total, born of loneliness and fear, woven into discussions of correspondence fanning out and subdividing. Um, let me read one more, the one at the beginning of the book. Um, and... Uh, Again, this is like not, this is unlike any of the rest of the poems in the book. So, um, I don't know, it's uh, sort of a, a surrealist, like drinking song, I guess. <laughs> um, drinking chrysanthemums at the green gamine. A chrysanthemum is a, is a good drink. It's a, um, mostly vermouth, but it's got some Benedictine and absinthe in it, and you should order one sometime. <laughs> Uh, two more chrysanthemums arrived in partially melted coupe glasses, and we laugh, foreseeing in their slouch our own final, if not our first melting, allowing the glass on our minds modeled in glass to melt against the curved and graying light, focused into brightness by, by vermouth sloppily contained, vermouth without absinthe, without benedictine, these being extinct, though something of them was echoed as the barman stirred in a licorice lovebird which sloughed a green and purple mist, half-heartedly dimming the drink, early sunset. We laughed and it felt good, echoing something of this false twilight that was ours also, or was nearly as inhabitable as the cresting, breaking wave of climax, say, in another's body, or in all honesty, we may only have felt like laughing. And they brought us two more chrysanthemums, and two more chrysanthemums, as though we'd not only ordered but drank all four. And when we had, or sometime during, a donkey splashed his guava moonshine, japing profanely inside his paper donkey head, just for the sport of being seen being thrown out, and was thrown out. Outside, he died inside a daffodil's head, and was readmitted, laughing and announcing, it was me the whole time. And they brought us another two chrysanthemums, and a cordial steeped from the last apricot flowers, from the last apricot tree. Plucked, we joked, 
at the one indivisible moment that the guttering falsetto from an unnamed and quite distant white dwarf star first failed to reach the earth, alas. That's it. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Let's give the folks a little round of applause. Uh, we have some books for sale. The poets will be signing books. And everyone could please move your chairs up against one of the walls. I'd be grateful. Thanks again. Thank you so much. I want to like first uh, thing in the book, but I don't know what I can do. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. I feel like it's like a buzzword. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. I tried to reach out to you. Can I hold up? Thank you.